Dr. Felicia M. Nave, the first female and 20th president of her alma mater, Alcorn State University. In 2008, Nave won Prairie View A&M University College of Engineering Outstanding Service Award. In 2015, Nave was the recipient of Top 30 Influential Women of Houston Award, Outstanding Alumna Award in 2019. The state of Mississippi, and named after its governors, Jane L. Alcorn, purchased the Oakland campus for $40,000. Hiram R. Rebels resigned his seat as a United States Senator to become the university's first president. The oldest public historically black land grant institution in the United States, founded in 1871 as a result of the people of Mississippi's efforts to educate the descendants of formerly enslaved Africans. Good morning, Dr. Felicia M. Nave. We welcome you. Can you share some historical events or facts about Alcorn State University? Oh, absolutely. So right now, Alcorn is embarking on its 150th year anniversary. So we've been around for a very long time, educating uh, students and scholars and making major contributions uh, to the world. We have to celebrate 100 years of football at Alcorn. We are um, six-time division uh, champions, back-to-back -back SWAT champions in our football program. We have a very storied uh, and successful tennis program uh, that goes back for a number of years where well, we won about 11 or 12 uh, SWAT championships, which is, which is the most uh, for our sports sporting events. We also have legendary coaches uh, such as uh, uh, Marino Kassam for football, uh, um, Dave Whitney for basketball uh, and Shirley Walker for women's basketball. Um, we have a number of uh, alums who cut across a number of different genres, uh, whether that's in acting, uh, sports, politics, you name it, Alcorn has had an opportunity to provide success and to contribute to moving the needle forward. We also have our School of Nursing, uh, which offers nursing degree programs starting at the ADN level all the way through the Doctor of Nurse Practitioner. So we offer a series, a number of programs, our degree levels in our School of Nursing. Our next and largest uh, college is our School of Arts and Sciences. In that college, in that school, we offer degrees in math, in computer science, in um, social science, social work, history, English, chemistry, biology, uh, and fine arts, music, and I don't think I missed one there, but it is, it has the most degree programs in that particular field. And we offer, um, we offer degrees at the bachelor's and master's level in the School of Arts and Sciences. That's followed by our School of Education and Psychology, where we offer degree programs at the bachelor's, master's, and specialist level in elementary and secondary education. Uh, we have a degree program in psychology, as well as a degree program in uh, health, physical education, and recreation. And our last school will be our School of Business, where we offer degrees in business administration. Uh, we have degrees in finance and accounting as well. And as and at the master's level, we have a master's of business administration. Well, that was amazing. It sounds like there's a degree for everybody. I was glad to hear that um, you have a program for psychology because I plan on going into psychology. Absolutely. So, yes, that was no, just thank you for that. Did you know Medgar, Medgar Wiley Evers was an African American civil rights activist in Mississippi? He was the first state's field secretary for the NAACP and a World War II veteran who had served in the United States Army. He organized voter registration efforts and economic boycotts and investigated crimes perpetrated against black people. At the young age of 37, he was assassinated as he emerged from his car. 
while carrying NAACP t-shirts that stated, Jim Crow must go. Edwards was struck in the back with a bullet that ricocheted into his arm. He staggered 30 minutes before collapsing, dying at the local hospital 50 minutes later. In light of Black History Month being last month and simply wanting to highlight Black individuals who are often overlooked when we talk about Black history, Ms. Nay, I wanted to know, does Alcorn do anything to commemorate Medgar Evans' legacy or any African-American leaders for that matter? We absolutely do. Uh, uh, Medgar Evans is one of our most noted uh, alums. Uh, he also met his wife, uh, Merle Evers at Alcorn, who is also a national uh, hero. And so in, as it specifically relates to uh, Megger Evers, uh, our one of our residential um, housing complexes named in his honor. Uh, we have a statue on the campus that commemorates uh, his his uh, his likeness, as well as our auditor. We have an auditorium that is named in his honor. What are some steps you took to become president? So uh, I am a honest person. Uh, I did not necessarily set out to be a college president. And what I did set out to do uh, was have a successful career. Um, and to be positioned to be able to have the greatest impact and to be able to use the talents that God gave me both uh, from a career field perspective, but also from an influence perspective as well. And so the first thing that you need to do is to get good grades while you're in K-12 and graduate at the top of your class, race to the top. You know, be competitive with each other to make sure you have good grades and then attend a college of your choice. Uh, of course, we love to have all of you at Alcorn State University, but I do understand for different reasons, you may not be able to make it this way, but I would encourage you to attend a college uh, where you can grow and continue to learn and be successful, make good grades, uh, but don't just attend college and don't just uh, be in school, get involved. Be involved in extracurricular activities such as sports, be involved in organizations such as the NAACP, volunteer, um, give back of your time and your talent to others in order to help you grow and become a more well-rounded uh, individual. You name it, Alcorn has had an opportunity to provide success and to contribute to moving the needle forward. Wow, that's nice to know. Um, I actually read about some of the things that y'all had going on with the politics and how y'all draw attention to those things. So. I really like that about our uh, course thing. Well, thank you, Ms. Jahaya. Yes. Oh, and I can't believe I did not mention our world famous uh, Sounds of Dynamite featuring the Golden Girls. Can you okay. tell us what are some challenges you face while trying to acquire your role as president? Uh, so I, my, my grandmother raised me uh, yes, there are challenges in life, and you will come across uh, a number of challenges, uh, whether that's in finance, financial challenges, people challenges, uh, mental challenges. Sometimes you get in your own way uh, challenges. Uh, but she taught me to um, not focus on it as being a challenge, but look for the opportunity that exists in whatever you're facing at the time. And so although you know, I consider myself a smart student. Uh, I had some tr struggles sometimes in some of my classes uh, with some of my professors. And so um, instead of allowing it to stop me or, or keep me from what my goals were, you seek out the resources that you need in order to help you overcome whatever uh, the challenge is so that you can, um, you can still accomplish or, or move your goal. Uh, sometimes everybody is not in your corner. So I've come up with, come in contact with people who have different agendas, uh, both as a student, even in my role as president. Everybody doesn't uh, like change. 
Uh, most people don't like change, uh, but you still have to <clears throat> um, settle down, find solutions, work with people, uh, talk to people, talk people through the situations in order to continue to move the agenda that you believe to be best for um, whatever um, activity or, 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 or thing that your initiative that you're, you're moving forward. So I've, I've experienced financial challenges. Uh, my husband and I met here at Alcorn and, and got married right after I graduated, but he was still a student. And so we had to take on additional jobs uh, while a student. We started our family early uh, and we have four children. And so um, children provide challenges too. I'm sure you all can relate to that. You don't listen, you don't always listen to your parents. Mm -mm. You don't think we know what we're talking about. And so- What is your philosophy for the key to success? Hmm. My philosophy on the key to success is being, first of all, being true to yourself. Uh, second is the key to success is having a good spiritual center um, because of what you will go through in life and come up against. Um, always having in my center is, is God. I believe in, in God, a Christian person. And so being able to draw on my faith is very important and significant to um, to being successful. And finally, being willing to take a risk. Uh, being bold in how you approach things and always have a forward thinking, progressive um, mindset. Life changes. And if you are not prepared or willing to change with it, then sometimes you get left behind. So being successful uh, for me is, is being who you are, having a strong faith center and always being willing to tackle challenges head on. And in light of it being Women's History Month, what would you like to say to the young Black females listening about goal setting? Oh, that's a great question. Um, and actually, I did an interview yesterday with one of our communication students, and she asked a similar question. And so what I say to you all is that there are no boundaries and there are no ceilings for you in what you can accomplish and what you can dream. So I encourage you to be bold, be brave, and kick whatever door open that you need to kick open to get in whatever room that you choose to be in. You are excellent. You are beautiful, you are brilliant, and you are great. It is up to you to live into and live up to whatever it is that you choose to accomplish for your life.